So if you weren't here Friday, you really want to pay attention to this. I'm going to review uh, the long method of factoring a quadratic trinomial when your a value uh, is 1. Actually, it works even if it's not 1. But anyways, yesterday I gave you this handout right here. And here are the notes, the long way to factor ax squared plus bx plus c. And you have all this, these ginormous multiple steps, right? Step 1, multiply a times c. Step 2, and so on and so on. And step 4 is actually a multi-step problem itself because you have to factor by grouping, which requires three steps. So anyway, I just want to review one question applying this long method of factoring. So what I want to do is, we already explained this on the previous video. But I want to explain this one again where it says teacher does it. And I have the steps right here, right next to it, so you could follow along. So if you weren't here Friday, please follow along. If you were here Friday, just pay attention so you could uh, refresh your memory on this. So it says right here, step one is to multiply a times c. So everybody should write down one and then put a times c. And remember, your a value in this case is one, your b value is negative two, and your c value is negative 24. Again, your a value is one, your b value is negative two, your c value is negative 24. So when you do multiply a times c, you do get negative 24. So negative 24 is the answer to step one. Step two, we need to think of the multiples of that number, negative 24, that combine together to give you b. Okay, So that's what step two says. Think of the multiples of negative 24 that combine together to give you the b value, which is negative two. And it does say tip, make a list. So how could we get negative 24? Well, I could say negative one times 24 or negative 2 times uh, 12, or negative 3 times 8, or negative 4 times 6. Those are the four possible options besides changing signs. Anyhow, uh, which pair of numbers combines together to give us the b value, which is negative 2? Let's see. If I combine negative 1 and 24, that gives me a 23. Obviously, the b value is not 23. Negative 2 plus 12 is 10. That's obviously not 10. Negative 3 plus 8 is 5. That's the b value is not 5. Negative 4 plus 6. What's negative 4 plus 6? 2. Negative 4 plus 6 is 2. Now, the b value is not 2, but it's negative 2. That means I have the right number 2, but I just have the wrong sign. So what does that tell you about these numbers? They're the right numbers. They're just the wrong signs. So what I need to do is change that pair of number signs. I want to change that negative 4 to a positive 4. I want to change the positive 6 to a negative 6. And that's the correct pair of numbers that we're looking for on step 2. Okay. Step 3. This one's a little confusing. Rewrite your b value. You see this b value that's negative 2? You want to rewrite that negative 2 as those two numbers from step 2. So we want to change the negative 2 to be a positive 4 and a negative 6. So instead of negative 2x, I want to write positive 4x minus 6x. And let's continue reading on step 3. It says, thus changing your trinomial to a polynomial. In other words, you're going to be changing your three terms, 1, 2, 3, to four terms. OK, so let me show you. The a, the x squared, is going to be the same. So this is step 3 right here x squared is still x squared. Now, the b value that, that has a, the x on it, the negative 2x, I want to rewrite that negative 2x as plus 4x minus 6x. Because after all, if I go plus 4x minus 6x, I'll actually get the negative 2x that I have up there. Make sense? So we still have the c value of negative 24. I'm going to write down that c value of negative 24 at the very end. So let me reiterate step three. Step three was changing your trinomial to a polynomial. Three terms into four terms. And how do we change the three terms into four terms? We take that b value and we rewrite the b value as the two numbers from step two. So that becomes a 4x minus 6x. There it is in red, 4x minus 6x. So the question becomes, why the heck would I want to change the three terms to four terms? We just made it bigger, we made it longer, we made it uglier. Why would I want to do that? To factor by grouping, right? To factor by grouping. And that's exactly what step four is, 
factor by grouping. Now that you have these four terms, you could do step one on factoring by grouping, which is separated into two groups. And after you separate it into two groups, you want to factor out something from the first group. What could I pull out? An x. OK, what would I have left? x plus 4. OK, good. And how about the second group over here? What could I pull out? A negative 6. Good job, guys. So a negative 6. And that would also give us an x plus 4 on the inside. And that's beautiful because that's what factoring by grouping is all about, to be able to get the same binomial here and the same binomial there. That way you could pull out what's in common in both groups. So we're going to put that x plus 4 out here in the front. And of course, well, what would we have uh, left? We'd have the x left over and the minus 6 left over. But of course, uh, the parentheses are, are not the correct size. So our correct size parentheses answer would be x plus 4 times x minus 6. And that is the long and honestly horrible method of factoring a quadratic trinomial when your a value is 1 because there's a shortcut that we're going to explain on the next video. This is just a little review of what we did Friday. I did want you to do numbers 1 through 5 on the worksheet using this long method. And there's a reason for it, which I'll explain in the next video when we do the shortcut. But anyway, as you can see, there's a lot of work, a lot of time to be able to do one simple problem. What do I say simple? Because with a shortcut, we'll be able to do it like in 10 seconds.